There are a lot of different causes of facial nerve damage. Approximately two in every 10,000 people are gonna have some sort of damage to their facial nerve on an annual basis. So this is something that affects literally thousands of people every year across the country. The most common cause of facial nerve damage is something called Bell's palsy. Usually, fortunately, for 85% of patients, it's self-limiting, and they get recovery completely within about three months. However, there's a lot of other different causes of facial paralysis, including acoustic neuromas, little benign tumors that are found close to the facial nerve. They have to get it operated on. There might be some damage from that. There's other parotid gland malignancies that are close to the facial nerve. There's other viral uh, etiologies or reasons for people to get some facial nerve damage. So that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg as far as the, no, the types of causes of facial paralysis. And it affects people differently. If a surgery happens, maybe some of the facial nerve has to be removed and they're not gonna get any kind of recovery back. Some patients don't have that. They'll get some recovery back, but the recovery may be misguided and they may have some nerve regeneration that basically ends up with some crossed wires within the branches of the facial nerve. That's gonna to lead to some aberrant movement in the face. For people who don't have a facial nerve, it's gonna have an effect where you don't have any movement in the face. And so for those two different types of patient populations, they're both having facial nerve damage, but we might treat them differently. Your facial nerve is the nerve in your face that goes on both sides of your face and it affects the movements of your face. So it's what controls the, the natural motions of our face. It's what helps us elevate our eyebrows, helps us close our eyes, helps us smile and do everything and move the, the muscles of facial expression. So facial nerve damage is gonna be something that hurts that nerve and subsequently causes you weakness on the face. You might commonly think about some stroke patients who not only lose function in some areas of their body, but might lose some function on, in their face. Those are the things that are gonna cause damage, and that's what happens when you have damage to the facial nerve. Facial paralysis or facial nerve weakness can affect patients in a lot of different ways. But some of the most common things that you're gonna see are patients are gonna have difficulty closing their eye. And we've gotta do things to help protect the eye so that we don't lose it. With, a, with an unprotected eye, if it dries out, you can get corneal irritation infections and people can actually lose their eye. Um, that's fortunately very uncommon nowadays because we're very active and proactive about protecting the eye uh, when patients can't close it. Long-term consequences of some of the effects of facial paralysis can be inability to really communicate well and it's not just speech which a lot of them may have some difficulty with actually communicating with speech but more importantly for these patients it's actually non-verbal communication. You don't realize how much you speak and communicate with your face until half of it doesn't move well and you can't control it. And all of a sudden, people you're talking with and people that have known you maybe for years aren't reading your social cues and aren't reading your nonverbal communication very well. So communication is a big issue. Some of these patients have difficulty eating, keeping food and drink in their mouth and doing things like that. The common treatments for patients with facial paralysis may vary depending on the degree of recovery that they've had following their facial nerve injury. However, the common treatments that we're going to offer patients are specialized neuromuscular retraining of the face. So it's a kind of a specialized physical therapy uh, for the face to help you learn how to reuse the muscles of facial animation. We use a lot of Botox therapy to help quiet down some of the muscles that get hyperactive after recovery from facial nerves. So we wanna create as much balance and symmetry with the use of Botox. And then there are a lot of different surgical options to offer patients. We mentioned earlier problems with the eye and sometimes we'll do a surgery to lift the lower eyelid or put a weight in an upper eyelid to help them facilitate their eye closure better. In addition, the big surgery that we would do would be some sort of nerve grafting procedure or facial reanimation surgery using a part of a muscle from the leg transposed up into the face to help give them new muscle and new nerve in the face to help them smile again. We offer the full variety of treatment options for patients with facial paralysis. Outcomes that patients should be able to expect is improved symmetry and balance in their face. They should be able to feel better about uh, how they communicate with other people, non-verbally especially. They should feel good about uh, the safety of their eye and the things that they can expect to do on a day-to-day -day basis to improve their eating, drinking, communicating, and so forth. 
Best case scenarios, we get patients who have facial reanimation surgery and they get back a smile. And if you could imagine not being able to smile and having that change, that makes a tremendous difference in patients' lives.